And now, suspense. Your host tonight on the Autolite Theater is the maker of the famous wide gap Autolite resistor spark plug. This is the spark plug that's ignition engineered by Autolite men who make complete ignition systems for many of America's finest cars. In its 28 great plants from coast to coast, Autolite makes over 400 products for cars and trucks. Spark plugs, bumpers, hubcaps, bullseye seal beam units, radiator grills, batteries, wire and cable, ignition systems, speedometers, instruments, tail lights, and many more. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Now, Autolite and its 60,000 dealers and service stations everywhere present Suspense. mention it. You remember that Mead case I said we shouldn't have paid out on? Now leave that one be, will you? And give me my cigarettes. I got some new dope. There's nothing fishy about the way Mead died. You saw the death certificate. Do you know that the doctor who issued the certificate had his license taken away from him? So what? And incidentally, he married Mead's widow. And you think they got rid of Mead, is that it? No, I didn't. Till I found out that Mrs. Mead had taken out a good hefty policy with us, naming guess who as beneficiary. Not Doc Archer. Doc Archer. Oh, I just love a cigarette. You know, this is the first one I've had in goodness knows when. The doctor, my husband that is, doesn't approve. Funny thing, nothing we like seems to be good for us. Oh, it isn't that he minds. He just thinks they're a needless expense, and of course he's right. Yeah, I know. Mrs. Archer, how did you hurt your arm? Oh, I sprained it, falling down the cellar stairs. Silly me. The lucky thing you didn't hurt yourself worse. Well, that's what the doctor said. He was furious. But it wasn't very bright of me to leave the rolling pin at the top of the stairs. Well, it does seem kind of risky. I haven't the slightest idea why I left it there. But that's what I get for being so absent-minded. You know, Mr. Wesker, when I was in the theater... Oh, well, you were an actress, huh? Well, long time ago. Couldn't have been too long ago. Mrs. Archer, have you had any other accidents lately? No, why? Well, maybe we'd just like to know how good an insurance risk you are. That's a pretty fair-sized policy you carry. Oh, my husband's a great believer in insurance. He puts practically every penny we have in it. Your husband's such a great believer in insurance. Why doesn't he carry some himself? Oh, but he does. He took out a policy for himself the same day he bought me mine. Not with our company. Oh, well, perhaps not. It's probably with another company. I haven't seen the policy myself. The doctor keeps track of his own papers. Well, then you don't actually know if there is a policy. Well, of course I do. He said there was. Why would I be the only one insured? Yeah. That's just what I'm wondering, Mrs. Archer. What do you mean? Well, there's always been one or two things about your first husband's death that I never quite understood. Never quite understood? Yeah. Tell me something. Up until the time of his death, had he ever had any stomach trouble or any difficulties with his heart? Well, no, but there has to be a first time. Had you known Dr. Archer long before you married him? Oh, yes. He, he was an old friend of ours. Having her husband die must have made it quite convenient for Dr. Archer. Are you suggesting that Dr. Archer had something to do with my first husband's death? I'm not suggesting anything yet. Why, I never heard of anything so outrageous in my life. 
I ought to complain to your company about you. If I'm wrong, Mrs. Archer, you do all the complaining you want to, but you've got to listen to me for a minute first. No, Mr. Westcott, I don't have to listen to you, and I'm not going to listen to you. I want you to leave my house right now, please. Mrs. Archer, in the year 1933, an old lady tripped over a broom, fell down a flight of attic stairs, and broke her neck. Her name was Mrs. Archer, and her son, who was your present husband, collected in the neighborhood of $25,000 insurance money from a fall. He told me all about that accident. Oh, did he also tell you how the steering wheel failed in his brother's car? As sole beneficiary, he collected another $20,000. What's all this got to do with the way my first husband died? Certainly, Dr. Archer didn't get anything out of that. He got you, Mrs. Archer. Mr. Westcott, I'm not such a fool as to think that Dr. Archer is so much in love with me that he'd do away with someone just to get me. If I'm right about this, this has nothing to do with love. Well, what has it got to do with then? Dr. Archer just needs somebody to insure. Have you said all you have to say? All except this. If you're wise, you'll be careful. More careful than you've ever been in your life before. Please go. All right. I'll leave those cigarettes for you, Mrs. Archer. The buttercups, come on, get up, get up. Here comes the sun. <laughs> there, just what the doctor ordered. Now, isn't that a beauty? Oh, it is a beauty, Stephen. Oh, nothing is too good for my darling. Oh, <laughs> a few minutes every day under this while you're in your bath and you'll be a new woman. <laughs> now, I'll put the lamp where it belongs. <laughs> up with the buttercups. Come on, get up, get up. Josie. Yes? Who left these cigarettes here? Where'd they come from? Oh, those, uh... Yes, how, how, how do you expect to economize if you go throwing away money on cigarettes? Oh, but I didn't, Stephen. Someone left them here today. Who left them? The man from the insurance company. The insurance company? What did he want? He wanted to see me about my policy. What about your policy? Well, he... Oh, Stephen, I might as well start from the beginning. It's all so silly. Yes. Tell me. Well, this man came from the insurance company this afternoon, and he... Wait a minute, Sam. See who that is. Yes? Oh, yes, Mr. Westcott. I, I was just beginning to tell my husband about your visit this afternoon. Well, I wouldn't tell him too much if I were you, Mrs. Archer. It might not be safe. Why? I'll tell you why. Your husband hasn't any insurance with any company. I checked. You understand? Okay, I'll check with you tomorrow. You what? You have what there? Bye. What did he want? He, uh, he wanted to know if he left his cigarettes here. <laughs> Are some people tight? Well, you were going to tell me about his being here today. Oh, yes, he, uh... Oh, he was telling me about all those wonderful things I could add to my policy, like accident insurance and things like that, so that if I got sick or hurt myself, I could collect on it. We're not putting up any good money on such nonsense. After all, I'm not going to let my little girl get sick, am I? <laughs> Stephen! <laughs> Stephen, what are you laughing at? He was idiot enough to leave his cigarette here. I'm going to smoke one. Oh, I, I just, I just can't believe any of it. It's like those, those scary plays I used to do in stock, Mr. Wesker. Were you a good actress, Mrs. Archer? I think so. Why? I don't know. I was, I was just thinking about something. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Wesker. Bye, Mrs. Archer. That the uh, Archer Dame? Yeah, that's her. You're on a wild steer there, Hawkshaw. I hope you're right. And you've been in this racket as long as I have. You'll find out that practically everybody dies in some dull, old-fashioned way. Bud gets them. The old pump stops. While they're hit by a fruit peddler's truck. You young fellows are always looking under beds for Dracula. It's time you realize that the common bathtub kills more people than Al Capone and all his boys ever did. Oh, just today. Just today. 
I had to pay on a man who knocked a sunlap on himself while he was taking a bath. You mean he was electrocuted? He sure was. And now his relatives want to collect not only the life insurance, but property damage on the land. Are you having your son back here? Yes, Stephen. Have you seen my wallet? No, I haven't. It's property in the suit you had on yesterday. No, no, it isn't. Did you look on the dresser? On the dresser? It isn't there. Well, I haven't the slightest idea where you put it then. Maybe I left it in the bathroom. Now, why on earth would you, would you leave it in the bathroom? Stephen, Stephen, you almost knocked the sun lamp into the tub. I hope it isn't broken. Well, I wouldn't worry about it there, even if it is. We can always buy a new one. In just a moment, we'll bring you the second act of Postmortem, starring Sidney Blackmer and Peggy Conklin. While we're waiting now for the curtain to go up, I'd like to introduce you to a real blue blood of the canine world. She's the Baroness von Strudel mit Lachs under Bagel. Well, it seems the Baroness started off one day to collect her usual blue ribbon at the annual dog show. She'd always walked off with the honors before, but uh, that car was no winner, and the way it was jerking the Baroness around, it looked like she wasn't going to be a winner either this time. But the Baroness wasn't blue ribbon for nothing. She was smart enough to know what was wrong. She knew that the trouble was old, worn-out spark plugs, and she knew what the remedy was, too. So she came in here for a set of those sensational new Autolite resistor spark plugs. You see, there's a newly developed 10,000 ohm Autolite resistor built into every Autolite resistor spark plug, found in no other automotive type spark plug. It's this resistor that cuts down on electrode wear. It actually increases electrode life 200% and more. Thanks to that amazing resistor, these remarkable new spark plugs make practical a wider spark gap setting. And that's what does the trick. It gives you a smoother engine idle and more positive firing on leaner gas mixtures. So you actually save gas. Another thing, that exclusive resistor cuts down on radio and television interference too. So your friends will like that. Well, here they are, those longer lasting ignition engineered Autolite resistor spark plugs. And incidentally, they're available only through your Autolite dealer. So if it sometimes seems to you that your car is going to the dogs, why don't you stop in at your nearest Autolite dealer right away and have him take out those old worn out narrow gap spark plugs and replace them with a set of these new revolutionary wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. Well, sir, after we got a set of Autolite resistor spark plugs into the Baroness's car, her problem was all settled and she got her usual blue ribbon too. Yes, indeed, thanks to Autolite. And your plug-weary car will take first prize for smoothness if you take a tip from the Baroness. And that is, visit your Autolite dealer tomorrow. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, continuing our suspense presentation, we bring you the second act of Post Mortem. Uh, this little piggy went to Wall Street. <laughs> Almost time to open him up, huh, dear? Well, it certainly sounds like... Oh, I'll get there. Well, remember, we're not buying anything. This is me? That's right. Telegram. Oh. Sign here, please. You'll have to excuse my left hand. I hurt my right one. <laughs> That's beautiful compared to some of the John Hancocks I get. Thank you. Well, now... Who in the world would send me a wire as Mrs. James Mead? Well, open it. Stephen. Stephen, I don't understand. 
understand this at all. Well, that's very simple. You've apparently had one of the winners in the Irish sweepstake, and you've won $150,000, that's all. What's that? Josie! Josie, we've won $150,000! Oh, <laughs> oh, darling, you don't need to fool your little Stevie anymore. I know it's wrong to gamble and waste money, but this time I forgive you. Darling, how I forgive you! Oh, but, but Stephen, I, I didn't buy a sweepstakes ticket. Well, you must have. Th this is from the committee of the whole shebang. But I never bought one of those things in my life. Well, then why would they send you this wire? Look, that's you, Mrs. Mrs. James Mead. And I'm not Mrs. James Mead any longer. Well, I'm Mrs. Archie. You're the one they mean. But how could I be? I didn't buy a ticket. Then why would they send you this wire? I haven't the remotest idea. Unless... Unless what? Unless poor Jim bought it for me and... And forgot to tell me about it. That's it. He bought it. Oh, <laughs> wasn't that sweet of him? Oh, sweet isn't half of it. Oh, $150,000. Stephen. <laughs> Stephen. What yes, does this dear. mean? Winner must have ticket in his possession. Well, it simply means you have to have the ticket, that's all. Well, I hope we can find it. Well, we've got to find it. We can't let $150,000 slip through our fingers. Oh, now, let's see. Where would Jim put a thing like that? Well, think, for heaven's sake, think. Well, I am thinking, Stephen. You ought to know. After all, you were married to the man long enough. Where would he put it? Well, now, let me see. Where would he put it? Oh, I know, Stephen. Sometimes he, he used to hide things behind the clock. Oh, we've got to. It's 150,000. But, Stephen, I've, I've looked every place I can think of. Well, think of some more places. It's $150,000. Do you hear? It's $150,000. Oh, it must be someplace. Jim never lost anything in his life. Are you sure you looked in all the clothes you gave away after he died? Well, you ought to know. You helped me. Remember the $7 you found in the brown suit? Yes, I know. Did you give away all his things? Yes, everything but the blue suit. And Stephen, come to think of it, I didn't look in that one. Then that must be where the ticket is. Of course it is, Stephen. That was his favorite suit. He wore it all the time. Oh, then that must be it. Let, let, let's have a look. Come on. We can't see. Why not? Where is the suit? On Jim. It's the suit he's buried in. There goes our 150,000. But why, Stephen? Now that we know where the ticket is. Well, what good does it do to know if we can't get it? But can't we get one of those uh, court orders or whatever you call them? You mean open the grave? Well, I'm, I'm sure that Jim would want me to. What kind of woman are you? Haven't you got any decent feelings? Oh, but Jim would never have bought me the ticket if he didn't want me to have the money, Stephen. We're not getting any court order, and that's that. Well, I... I guess the $150,000 doesn't mean much to you. Oh, woman, woman. Well, then why can't we get the ticket, Stephen? Because I forbid you. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes, Stephen. Dr. Archer, there's a little chore I want to have done. You'd better meet me. Uh, 
That does it, Doc. There he is. Not so loud, you fool. We ain't gonna wait him. This place is full of caretakers. Uh, and what are you looking for, Doc? That's my affair. Now it it ought to be in one of these pockets here. I can't understand it. It must be here. He can't have any money on him, Doc. Shut up. <laughs> can't you take a joke? I'm beginning to suspect. I've taken one joke too many tonight. What do you mean? What I'm looking for isn't here and never was here. Well, what are we doing then? Never mind. Say, he looks pretty well preserved. Nobody asked you how he looked. Now what have I said? Just don't talk too much. Uh, there's no need to be so jumpy, Doc. Downey's keeping an eye out. He'll give a whistle if anybody comes. It's not there. It's not there, that's all. It's a shame, Doc. Let's get this thing covered up. Fix it back the way we put. What's that? There's someone coming. Come on. Let's get out of here. Riley, what happened? Everybody got away except the body. No, I'm not kidding. The guards come and they took the coffin and the body off someplace. Uh, they fuss around it quite a while. And then I hear them saying something about an autopsy. Looks like arsenic poisoning, one of them said. Arsenic? Autopsy? Are you sure? All right. All right. It's time to get up. Nine o'clock. I stayed awake so, so late last night waiting for you that I overslept this morning. Oh, that was a late call I had. I'll mm. get your breakfast for you right away. Oh, well, but you must have your bath first and your sun lamp. I don't need it now, Stephen. Oh, doctor knows best. <laughs> Stephen? Yes, Stephen, do you uh, still think we ought to let the $150,000 just go? I think we should get that court order and find the ticket. Oh, really, Stephen? Yes, I want you to have everything that's coming to you. Bath's all drawn. Now, I'll turn on the light. And your royal bath is ready. Now, you step right in, dear, and I'll fix the lamp just right. Oh, well, I can fix it, Stephen. Oh, no, doctor's orders. Oh, will you get that, Stephen? No, no, I can't talk to you now, Riley. Of course you'll get the fifty dollars. No, you won't get a hundred. You only did half the work. You'll get fifty or nothing. All right, all right. I'll see you later. Who was it, Stephen? One of my patients, dear. Are you are you in the tub? Yes, Stephen. Oh, darn it! What's the matter? I must have left my wristwatch in the bathroom. Well, you can't come now, Stephen. I've, 
I've got the lamp in front of the door, and you'll knock it over. I think I will come in, Josie. There's something that I want to talk to you about. What? You shouldn't have done it, Josie. Done what? Poison Jim Mead. What are you talking about? It was you who got the insurance, Josie. Stephen, Stephen, do you believe that I... The police will when they examine the body. The police will believe. I'll tell them. You won't tell anyone anything, Josie. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. I'm just telephoning the police. Oh. Oh, you are the police. Oh, you wanted us, mister. Here we are. I've just had the most frightful shock. Look. Look at this. What kind of writing is this? I don't know. My wife must have written it with the left hand. She'd hurt the other one. What's it mean? I don't know. I found it lying on the bathroom floor by the body. You mean your wife is dead? Well, apparently she pulled the sun lamp into the tub and electrocuted herself. Oh, this is awful. I told her time and again to be careful. And I was careful, Stephen. Josie, I thought the sun... Yes, you pushed the sun lamp into the tub. But I wasn't in the tub then. Mr. Westcott had also warned me about that. And Stephen, it was Mr. Westcott's idea that you think that Jim had won the sweepstakes. Yeah, it was nice of you to open up the grave, Archie. You saved us the trouble. We found the arsenic, all right, so... I guess that fixes you. Josie. Poor, dumb little Josie. Come on, Archie, let's get moving. Up on your feet. Yes, Stephen. Up with the buttercup. Thank you, Sidney Blackmer and Peggy Conklin, for a wonderful performance in Postmortem. This is Rex Marshall speaking for Autolite, and in just a moment I'll tell you about next week's suspense presentation. But first, here's a parade of Autolite products, and here they come. The horns, the windshield wipers, relays, ignition coils, and of course the batteries, Autolite Stay Full batteries. The batteries that need water only three times a year in normal car use. And here comes the wire, followed by the battery cable. And there are the starting motors, then the distributors, the generators, and of course the gas gauges. And there are the spark plugs, ignition engineered resistor spark plugs. Look at that precision, typical of Autolite because Autolite means precision engineering. Yes, in its 28 plants from coast to coast, Autolite makes over 400 products for cars, trucks, airplanes, and boats. So insist on Autolite original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, we will bring you another gripping story of suspense, The Monkey's Paw, starring Boris Karloff and Mildred Natwick. Also, be sure to listen to Suspense each Thursday night on your radio. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.